So he give all praise to Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya, and our Adonaya Chemi Shiaga, and our mother, the Ruaka Kwadoshi. We want to welcome you all to Hebrew Readers Church, and uh, glad to have you all here. Yes. And we hope you've been growing in the edification that Ahaya has been showing us. And uh, today we're going to be discussing the places to go. Because we look at the scriptures that Ahaya told us we have to leave America. Right. So he is also gracious to show us where we ought to go. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. In the places the Israelites will be delivered from the second time are as follows. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10 to 16. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10. In that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign for the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that Adonai shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. We're going to read all of it, and then we're going to come back and look at those places. All right. And he shall set up an enzyme for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Yoda from the four corners of the earth. So all the tribes will be gathered. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Yoda shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Yoda, and Yoda shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And Ahiah shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, and make men go over dry shod. This is the times to come. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11, to look at the places that Ahiah said he will gather us from, so that the Israelites may be encouraged and know places where Ahiah will be delivering his people from. All right? All right. And it shall come to pass in that day that Adonai shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria, Okay, so we're going according to what Ahaya said, right. because he gave his allotments to the sons of Noah in the book of Jubilees, chapter 8 to 9. You can see the allotments that were given. So today, the lands of Assyria is Armenia, North Iraq, east of the Tigris River, East Turkey, on the east of Euphrates, Azerbaijan, and that's the area of Asher, all right? And from Egypt. He's going to be bringing us out of there as well. And as you know, the Israelites, they were in the land of Goshen, which is up in the Alexandria area today. Right. And from Patros. Patros is what's known as Upper Egypt. It gives us understanding that it's the whole land of Egypt, all right? And from Cush. Cush today, from what was given in his allotment, would be Sudan, South Sudan. Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, and Djibouti. Right. And from Elam. From Elam. Elam today is the land of Iran, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India. That is the land of Elam according to his allotment where Ahaya will be gathering his people out of. And from Shinar. Shinar, interestingly, Shinar is a city. So right. not the whole of Iraq, but there's a city called Babel, Iraq. That's actually still has the name from Babel, from ancient Babel. All right. So Babel, Iraq is the area for the Shinar. All right. And from Hamath. Hamath in Syria is not the whole of Syria, but this specific city is called Hama, Syria today. That's another place where he will be gathering his people out of. Notice that there are certain places he mentions just that city, right. not the whole place. Like you have Egypt and Cush, he mentions the whole area. But then for Syria, he's a specific place, Hamas, Syria. And then for Shinar, it's specifically Babel, Iraq. Right. All right? So you can understand. 
All right. And from the islands of the sea. Now, the islands of the sea are the islands of the Mediterranean Sea. You have Cyprus, Crete, Corsica, Sardinia, Sicily, Rhodes, and the Balearic Islands, and Malta in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, he is very gracious to give us understanding of what places we can go to that he would deliver us from. Now, let's look at what shall come to pass in these end times to understand why those locations in Isaiah 11, 11 are the places where we need to be so that we may be a part of the remnant of Israel that shall be recovered by the Lord in these end times when he does his recovering of the people a second time. Let's start at Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10, please. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse shall stand for an ensign of the people. It shall, to it shall the Gentiles seek. His rest shall be glorious. The preaching of the gospel of peace will be the rest that shall be glorious for the Gentiles and the ensign of the people of Israel. Verse 12, please. And he shall set up the ensign for the nations, shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. He will bring the people from the four corners of the earth, which is within the allotments of the sons of Noah, as we have discussed in the past. He himself will bring the people out of the countries where they were scattered to bring them to the places that he will recover the remnant of Israel from. Can you read Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 34, please? And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. It's by his mighty hand and stretched out arm that he's doing the gathering. This will be the second time he has set his hand to assemble his people of Israel. Can you read Isaiah verse 11 and 11, please? And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Notice, it's the remnant that shall be left that will be recovered from these places. The rest of the sons of Israel that did not make it to these places would not be a part of that 144,000 remnant that shall be left after the desolations to come on the Hebrews. This remnant that he recovers the second time will be just like how he did it in the days of the Exodus. Can you read Isaiah chapter 11, verse 15, please? And Ahia shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, and make men go over dry shot. He will bring them through the seven streams of the Nile Delta on dry ground, like he led the forefathers through the Red Sea. Ch Isaiah chapter 11, verse 16, please. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of, the peop of his people, which shall be left from Assyria like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. There will be a highway for the rest of the Hebrews left in Assyria, as well like it was when they came out of Egypt. When they came out of Egypt, they went into the wilderness, and he shall do the same again here in the end times, so we can know after the places Isaiah 11 and 11, they'll be brought into the wilderness. Can you read Hosea chapter 2, verse 14? Please. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. And continue to see as he brings them to the wilderness, what will come to pass. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there I will plead with you face to face. When he brings us into the wilderness, it shall be like it was for our forefathers to plead with the Hebrews. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 36. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness in the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith Adonai Ahia. They'll be back under the cloudy pillar 
and fire by night again, just like the forefathers were. Can you read Isaiah chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, please? And Ahia would create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion, and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flame and fire by night, for upon all the glory shall be a defense. Continue, please. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a cov covert from storm and from rain. This time will be to bring us into the bond of the covenant in the wilderness. Can you read Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 37? And I Please. will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. There's also more that will happen in the wilderness. Can you read Ma the second book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 4 through 8, please? It was also contained in the same writing that the prophet, being warned of Elohim, commanded the tabernacle of the ark to go with him. As he went forth into the mountain where Moses climbed up and saw the heritage of Elohim. That's Pisgah and Mount Nebo area in the land of Reuben that was taken from the Moabites by Sihon, then inherited by Reuben in Moses' conquest. Continue, please. And when Jeremy came thither, he found a, holy, uh, a hollow cave wherein he laid the tabernacle and the ark and the altar of incense and so stopped the door. And some of those that followed him came to mark the way, but they could not find it. Which when Jeremy perceived, he blamed them, saying, As for that place, it shall be unknown until the time that Elohim gather his people again together and receive them unto mercy. Now, the Ark of the Covenant will get revealed again in the time of Ahayas gathering his people here in these end times in the wilderness. Continue, please. Then shall the Lord show them these things, and the glory of the Lord shall appear in the cloud also, as it was showed unto Moses, and as when Solomon desired that the place might be honorably sanctified. There we see the glory of the Lord will be there in the cloud, along with the ark and tabernacle. The rebels, on the other hand, will be purged during this time of him pleading with Israel in the wilderness. Can you read Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 38, please? And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that trans transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they so sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am Ahiah. The unrighteous shall not enter the land. And seeing that the two leader tribes can't enter the land without being purged, what shall depart between them? Can you read Isaiah chapter 11, verse 13? The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. The remnant of Joseph's children will be turned unto righteousness by following Judah without envy or being vexed at his prosperity, which will cause the tribes to walk as one again, with Judah leading and Joseph setting the example as firstborn. Then, while in the wilderness, they shall eventually go from Arabia and end up near modern-day Jordan, like in the Exodus. Can you read Isaiah chapter 16, verse 1 to 3, please? Sing ye the Lamb to the ruler of the land of Shelah, to the wilderness, unto the mount of the daughter of Zion. The prophet here encourages the Gentiles to send a lamb in tribute to Yahche, which is the rule of the land. The lamb should be sent from Edom, which includes Selah, unto the wilderness, where Yahche is in the cloudy pillar guiding the daughter of Zion in those last 45 days unto the end. Continue in verse 2, please. For it shall be that as a wandering bird cast out of the nest, so the daughters of Moab shall be at the fords of Arnon. Moab will be getting destroyed according to prophecy. So the daughters of Moab 
will be at the fords of Arnon after having left their own land to escape persecution like a bird cast out of the nest. The river of Arnon is the border between the land of Reuben to the north and Moab to the south in modern day Jordan. The Hebrews will be under the cloudy pillar in the wilderness nearby, just like it was in the Exodus. Verse three, please. The council, execute judgment. Make thy shadow as the night in the midst of the noonday. Hide the outcast. Beray not him that wandereth. The false prophet will be trying to kill Israel, so they will be fleeing from wilderness to wilderness, waiting on Christ to come. That's why in verse 3, that it's speaking of the Israelites when he talks about hide the outcast and beray not him that wandereth. The people will be there near the wilderness. Can you read Isaiah? I mean, I'm sorry, the ascension of Isaiah, chapter 4, verse 13, to see that Israel will be in that area from wilderness to wilderness. And many faithful and saints, when they saw him, for whom they were hoping, who was crucified, Yahweh, the Lord Christ, after that I, Isaiah, had seen him, who was crucified and ascended, and who believed in him. Of these few will be left in those days as his servants, while they flee from desert to desert as they await his coming. During this time, within the last five days of this world, before Christ comes, when the inhabitants of Judah get to the fords of Arnon, the women of Moab will help hide them from the false prophet. Can you read Ascension of Isaiah chapter 16, verse 4, please? But my now cast dwell with me, Moab. Be thou a covert to them from the face of the spoiler. For the executioner is at an end. The spoiler ceaseth. The oppressors are consumed out of the land. There we see the prophet is encouraging Moab to let Ahia's outcast dwell with them and keep, him, keep them from the extortioner and the spoiler that's seeking to destroy. Then... They shall enter into the borders of the land of Israel again by Arnon first, which belongs to Reuben, and eventually get to the Valley of Accor, which is in Judah, just like in the days of Joshua. Can you read Hosea chapter 2, verse 15? So we can see that transition. They will, they're going to be by Arnon with the women of Moab, and then now we're going to see where they're going to end up after that. And I will give her her vineyards from thence. And the valley of Achor, or a door of hope. And she shall sing there, as in the days of her youth, as in, and as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt. As you can see, the process is like the Exodus. He said he will, in Hosea 2 and 14, he said he would allure her and bring her into the wilderness. And then in verse 15, he's saying, I will give her her vineyards from thence. So it's from the wilderness Israel is going to come to receive her vineyards. And we got to see through Isaiah that she also has to come from the wilderness after hiding to come to the fords of Arnon to be protected by the women of Moab. And then she's going to be brought to the valley of Accor for a door of hope. And that's going to bring her into her borders. And it's going to be as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt. So we can see how things are just as it was in the past. Knowing these things helps understand why we have to get to the place of Isaiah 11 and 11 to be a part of the gathering. When, in, when the Hebrews finally enter the land within the last five days here in, the, here in this world, they shall conquer the Gentiles that remain. Can you read Isaiah 11 and 14? Please. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab. And the children of Ammon shall obey them. In closing, these are the things that are coming to pass in these end times. After bringing the remnant of Israel from all the countries where the Lord scattered them, in the four corners of the earth, the Lord will recover the remnant of them from those places in Isaiah 11 and 11 to bring them to the land of Israel. If any of us Israelites don't end up in the places of Isaiah 11 and 11 by the appointed time, we won't be a part of the recovery that the Lord is doing. 
you may be in whatever respective location you currently reside in right now. But according to prophecy, through scripture, you should understand he will gather you out of those countries where you were scattered to bring you to the locations of Isaiah 11 and 11, where he will set his hand to recover you a second time. The elect of the 12 tribes of Israel, whether in sub-Saharan Africa, the UK, the other parts of Europe, not mentioned in Isaiah 11 and 11, Asia, Israel, Jordan, for example, will be gathered to those places of Isaiah 11 and 11 by the Lord Yache, guiding them. The second gathering of the Israelites according to prophecy is that remnant that will be left in and gathered from the places of Isaiah 11, 11. So that's where we want to be. And hopefully that helps understand what's coming in these end times to understand why after America, Isaiah 11, 11 locations are where we want to go. You have anything, Brother Zachwa? I don't. I think that was good. Uh, all right. Uh, praise Yacha and you all. Remember the Feast of First Fruits is coming up on the, what is it, the 20, I don't want to give the wrong date. One moment. Friday, Friday the 21st is the day of the Feast of First Fruits. So be sure to make your preparations. It starts on the night fall of the 20th and it ends on the night fall of the 21st. And right after that is the Sabbath. So make your preparations for the Sabbath coming as well. All right. I'll be with you. Shalom. Shalom, everybody.